Okay, so I think I should preface this video with a quick note. I like OnePlus as a company. I really like what they've tried to do over the past few years. I like most of their products. However, I do feel like there's a shift in the direction of the company, so I thought I would make a video on that. Everyone knows this phone. This is the OnePlus 7 Pro. This came out about a month ago. It is a phone with a super smooth display. It's 90 Hertz, stuff just looks crazy smooth on it. Bright AMOLED. It's in my opinion, one of the best looking displays in the smartphone market right now. It also has a pop-up camera to keep the front display really clean. But when they announced this phone, it became apparent that in some parts of the world, including the United States and Canada, this would be the only OnePlus phone that you would be able to buy, the more expensive Pro variant of the OnePlus 7. The regular OnePlus 7 would not be available in those markets. So if you're in the US or Canada, you could only buy the OnePlus 7 Pro, not the regular OnePlus 7. If you wanted a cheaper OnePlus, you would be able to buy last year's model, like remaining stock of the OnePlus 6T. Now, having used the OnePlus 7 phone for a little bit, this is a fantastic phone. Now, if you convert it, like again, because it's not available here, I can't get exact pricing, but if you converted it from whatever markets they're available in to US dollars, it's around 500, 550 US dollars. So it's a reasonable price for what's essentially an upgraded version of the OnePlus 6T. Now, as cool as this phone is, the thing that I found more interesting was the fact that they were not selling this phone in North America. Now, when they first made that announcement of we're not selling this phone, the sentiment that I got online was that OnePlus is being greedy. Why are they doing this? Why are they selling this phone only like in Asia and in India? Like, why aren't they selling it in North America? And that is the real question. So earlier this year, Counterpoint Research put out some data and the headline of their article was that OnePlus was now one of the top five smartphone manufacturers when it came to the premium segment. So you have your big names like Apple and Samsung who've lost a little bit of market share. And then you have Huawei, Oppo and OnePlus who've all gained in market share. And it's not like, you know, they're the best companies in the world all of a sudden, but the fact that OnePlus, who has always been a small company, is now top five in premium smartphone manufacturers. And there's like 40 of them or something. There's a lot of them and they're top five. That's impressive. But buried in this article was a more interesting note. When it came to region, it was China, India, and Western Europe that drove four fifths of its global shipments. So that means that 80% of the phones that were moved went to China, India, or Western Europe. There's no mention of the United States. There's no mention of Canada. There's no mention of North America at all. It all went to those three places or the majority of it went to those three places. Now, if you take a step back and look at the history of OnePlus, like they started off as a company selling budget phones, $300 smartphones that were designed to shake up the market and it worked. And obviously that business model wasn't sustainable long-term. You can't just keep selling these super cheap phones with really low margins. That's just a really bad way to do business, but it got them the attention of enough people. And every year that went by, they bumped up the price a little bit while improving the phone and the strategy works. Like you basically take the fastest SOC at the time, package it into a nice looking case, mid-tier camera, and you sell it. And they've made a great name for themselves doing just that. And they've made waves with that product in Asia. India, China, people love OnePlus there. But in North America, they've made some moves, they're just not super popular yet. And like any business-minded company, you want to penetrate North America because that's where a ton of users are. If you can get people in North America to buy this phone, you win. So that's what this phone is designed to do. The OnePlus 7 Pro with the 90 Hertz OLED panel, the pop-up camera, crazy fast storage, warp charging, and then add a splash of Robert Danny Jr. for some ads in Asia. And maybe you got a winning formula, but in doing so by only selling the OnePlus 7 Pro in North America and not the regular OnePlus 7, it's shown how much the company has shifted from their original business model. It's shown how much the company has grown over the years, but it's also shown how much the market has shifted. So when they first had the original OnePlus One, they made a name for themselves as flagship killers. And over the years, more and more companies have done the exact same thing, making these mid-tier phones designed to disrupt the flagship market. And it's a very crowded space at this point. And when you have to compete with phones like the Paco phone and the K20, it is very hard to make money in that business. So they've shifted targets to a very different demographic. They're now selling premium smartphones. And that's a market that I think they can be very competitive in over the next few years. Now, the reason why I made this video was not because I dislike OnePlus or anything like that. It's because the regular OnePlus 7 is so good. I'm not gonna do a review on this thing. It really is like a upgraded version of the 6T, but it's a shame that they didn't sell this in North America. I get why they did it. Like it makes perfect sense. And I don't blame them for going down this business route. 
but I can't help but be a little bit disappointed because if I had to choose like one of these phones to recommend to the average person in North America, it would be the regular OnePlus 7, not the OnePlus 7 Pro. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.